Hey. Okay, and we're back. All right, so um, I apologize for that break, but I have downloaded a paintbrush application, so we can use that. All right. So the reason why I want to I want to use a paintbrush ash be, uh, app is because I think it's a quite valuable way to think about how we're approaching our research. Okay. So let's say, for example, then, okay, that we have a cultural object. Okay, this could be your text. It could be a book. It could be a film. It could be a dance. Whatever, okay. It could be a social situation, a phenomenon, right? But let's just say, for example, that right now our cultural object is this block of black square or rectangle. So I need to know how it is that other people have approached this block. Now, if I just go in there and I just start doing my thing, I could be uncovering things that people have already uncovered, okay? So right now I'm using this metaphor of something that needs to be uncovered or digged out or closely scrutinized or investigated, okay? Now, uh, not everything uses this kind of mindset, right? Just to clarify. But just let's just stick with that analogy for now. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to understand how is it that other people have looked at this object, okay? So first of all, you can't take for granted that you know people can all see it in a certain way, right? So some people, the way that they might try to map out or understand an object is they might do something like, oh, what my methodology is, I'm going to identify you know certain things by looking at it a certain way. So let's just say for a metaphor as an analogy, right? That my way of looking at it will be, I'm going to make straight lines, okay? I'm gonna make straight lines that are quite big, okay? So I've made, I'm going to make straight lines on this object in order to kind of carve out what I see, okay? So, okay, whatever, my lines don't need to be super straight, okay? All right, so, you know, uh, I have made, you know, so in my study of this cultural object, I made straight line, straight horizontal lines, okay? So then I would be like, okay, well then people have already made horizontal lines, right? So then maybe the type of research I want to do might be like looking at it from vertical lines. So, so then another scholar would be like, okay, well, we know already that, you know, when you make horizontal lines, this is what you see. You get, you get these kind of results. So then what happens when we make vertical lines instead? So I make vertical lines, right? So this next scholar came in and made vertical lines. So, and once they made vertical lines, they began to see certain kinds of things. You know, it's like, oh, you know, when you make vertical lines, then you see different kinds of results. You know, maybe the cultural object, you know, seems to be more this way or that way, okay? You know, and also, when you make, when you do your literature review, you can also cr criticize other people's methodologies. So it's like, okay, well, you know, Dr. Ko's vertical line did a vertical line methodology, but his vertical lines were not very straight. So then we have some problems. So maybe someone might want to go in again and make better vertical lines. So they would go in and be like, okay, you know, those vertical lines are bad. So we're going to make better vertical lines. And so we get sort of results or whatever, right? So, uh, you know, okay, whatever. Okay, this is not really important. But the idea is that you can criticize other people's methodologies. So, and then you would compare these kind of things together. So it's like, okay, so those are, those who have made vertical lines, you know, got these results. And when you combine those with those who made horizontal lines, you get certain effects, right? So in this example, this wasn't something I was doing on purpose, right? But do you notice that you're getting a sort of optical effect of kind of black dots appearing here because of optical effects? That's the combination of these two different, you know, uh, these two different methodologies, okay? And you might get certain effects like that too that only come up when you understand people's findings in relation to each other. So let's say the state of the field is that, oh, you got Chris cut, you know, cuts, right? But then maybe someone else might be like, you know, something more useful to think about is like, instead of using vertical lines, what happens, what do you uncover about this object when you make certain squares, right, or circles, right? So what happens when you observe it by putting circles in certain grids or something like that, right? So now a lot of different things have been mapped out, okay? This has been mapped out, that has been mapped out, that has been mapped out. Now, these are all different ways to look at the cultural object. And these different ways of mapping it enable you to see different kinds of perspectives. So every type of methodology you use adds a different kind of texture or a different shape to thinking about it, right? So like, you know, let's say then that, you know, like your methodology might be something different. It's like, okay, well, you know, the methodology everyone has used so far has been in black and white. Maybe the methodology I want to use will be to use a different type of color. And what happens, what happens when we use a different color to analyze these things, right? So all of these kind of ways of analyzing this object have been done in white, 
right, on a black. Well, what if we try red? So I'm going to use a different method. My method is going to use red to fill in these lines and see what kind of effects we get. So now the effect is very, very different. Okay, so now we understand a lot more about this cultural object because we're using this different methodology, right? And eventually you might have something where it's like, you know, people have done enough. You know, people understand that this entire, and let, let's go back to, you know, something, let's say uh, white, okay? Let's say people have understood that actually, you know, you know, like focusing on this particular section is most interesting. This section is most important, okay? You know, sorry, I was going to do this. And actually, this is already understood. And we understand this section very well, too. You know, some other scholar came in and did this section, okay? Some other scholar came in and did this section. And some other scholar has kind of provided a very comprehensive understanding of this part. And, you know, scholar X, you know, has said, okay, you know, these are the thing, kind of things that we understand. So we don't have a complete picture, but now we have an understanding of what's missing. Right? And what miss, what's missing might be our ability to look at something in significant detail. So you might be able to say, hey, you know, like, um, although people have a very good kind of clear picture of the overall, some people might still, we still might not have a very good idea of this particular part right here. This part right here. Okay. But how are you going to explain to people why it is that you want to study that part? You need to be able to show them the overall picture and the story of how different parts of this culture object have been kind of delineated so that you can understand it. So now you're at this part where you're like, okay, my literature review enables me to identify to you, the reader, why it is that we need to focus on this part and use this particular methodology. And the methodology I want to use is the spray paint methodology. The spray paint methodology on this particular section, zoomed in, allows us to see something very significant. Right? And by doing that, we're revealing something about the cultural object. Now, this might be the most important thing you could do for the overall picture, the overall idea of our understanding of the overall cultural object. But we can't do that until you identify and explain what other scholars have already done in order to understand this particular aspect. Okay? So I hope that that metaphor helps. What I'm trying to say is the lit review helps you become familiar with other what other people do, identify the appropriate research question, find evidence to establish the need for the proposed research, and stay current with others what others have done, and then plan out your research plan, okay, um, and develop something original. All right. So yeah, yours is not the role of summarizing. Okay. So this is another thing that people make mistake is they summarize what other people have done, but actually no, you need to kind of tell a story, you know, of uh, and you engage in a dialogue of what has been discovered in the field in application to your particular research question and what is to be written to discover others. You don't list and annotate. You do that for your annotated bibliography. But what you want to do is you want to dialogue. So in order to dialogue, you can say, what are the key debates and previous questions in the current work? What are the key discussions and agreements? What are the key theories? What are the examples of these, theory these theories in practice as demonstrated by others? Um, so... I think uh, what I can do is I can give you a short example. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, let's see first. Yeah. So, you know, you need to know what you're going to contribute. So you need to summarize first in order to understand, but then you synthesize and you bring your ideas together. You focus on their patterns and you look at different debates. And as you conduct your own research, you begin to see how it fits into these arguments. Okay. All right. So, you know, obviously to do that, you need to read widely, right? You need to understand, you need to read what other people have done. You know, so that you can have a big summary kind of picture. Take notes, even if you don't know yet how it applies to your research. Summarize in order to engage with their ideas. Okay, um, so uh, this is what I'm going to do. So one sort of example would be like a, of a literature review is like what I did for my MA dissertation is my literature review started off with this kind of question. It's like, what have people said already about this particular filmmaker? And I was doing it on Ozu, and what uh, and how Ozu's work is related to other kind of more contemporary filmmakers that people often compare him to, uh, you know, pos positively, you know, or compare as saying that they are similar, um, such as uh, Hou Xiaoxian, for example. So I pretty much read everything that had been written about Ozu, about Hou Xiaoxian, about this other filmmaker, and also about, you know, the works that, you know, people have compared favorably between them. 
Okay. And what I began to find is that there were kind of key questions and disagreements. Okay. And those began to be the kind of analytical lenses that I would use to kind of write out my literature review. So one of the key questions was, what's the importance of something like the pillow shot, which, you know, a lot of people kept talking about as this kind of uh, particular type of shot that Ozu would use where the camera would be, you know, placed, uh, much, much lower in the kind of field of vision, as if you were looking at it from the point of view from a pillow or, you know, and then is, and then my question would be like, oh, you know, is this really the most important thing that marks out Ozu as a filmmaker? And I looked at the disagreements. Another thing, another discussion that sort of came up as I was reading the literature that a lot of people talked about was, you know, is this considered something that's very Asian? Is this something that's considered very Buddhist? Is it considered very Japanese? And what were the important questions that, that had to do with that? You know, is it national identity? Is it cultural identity? Is it modernity? Okay. And then a lot of other questions that came up too was like, you know, what does it have to do with the representation of women and this kind of notion of time and history? You know, why is it that women get kind of used as a symbol or a metaphor, you know, and so these were the kind of different debates that were going on in this scholarship. And yet, you know, like not all of these have to do with each other. So I had to organize my literature in a view in a way that sort of demonstrates that I understand what people are talking about and that what I'm trying to say will help address those questions. Okay. And also point out what's missing. So my way of saying this is like, I was saying like, okay, well, you know, if we talk about Ozu's work, you know, only in terms of Ozu and we and we say that it's Asian, then that doesn't really make sense because, you know, there are a lot of other filmmakers who are also, quote, Asian, right, or have underwent a similar type of modernity. And in this case, my, my example would be that, you know, you have this kind of like American post-World War II Pacific modernity, you know, that happens with these countries that have been sort of... Um, you know, part uh, kind of incorporated into a kind of uh, American Pacific, you know, economic system of modernity. And so how might and also obviously Hollywood, right? So how would that type of, you know, modern economic system influence filmmaking in one way or another? So I was able to locate some sort of historical referent that could be used to identify the kind of and, and answer the sorts of questions people are asking. So is it really Japanese-ness? Or is it really a sort of experience of modernity that's generalized and localizable to filmmaking in this particular area? So by doing that literature review, I was able to refine my research question considerably. Okay, So that's what you also want to be doing with your research question. By understanding what other people have said, then you as well will be able to identify you know, the ways that you will be able to contribute to that research and answer the big questions. Okay, All right. So yeah. You know, summarize for yeah, read widely. Okay, so yeah, and so you need to take notes as you're reading. Um, this is really important because you're not going to know for sure how this applies to what you're doing, and also because as you're reading their work, you're also mapping out the field in your own way mentally, so that you're kind of understanding the cultural object better. Okay, so when you're reading other literature reviews, I think this is important: is understand how the author uses the literature. It's not just presenting information. It's explaining how it's useful to, you know, guiding your research project. How is that literature organized into themes, debates, disagreements, okay? What is the common thread of the argument that brings it together? Okay, and this is very important. Your literature review needs to have a common thread, okay? There needs to be, your literature review is basically it's a discussion. You're, and you're not doing the discussing, but then you're organizing what other people have said into a discussion around a particular research problem. So, for example, like, let's say, well, let's go back to my Ozu example. You know, I would start off with saying, like, you know, I would make a, you know, I would make a, I would identify the research question. I would be like, you know, many people have said that Yasujiro Ozu is the most Asian of all directors. You know, that his style and his content, you know, reflect Asianness. Okay. Now, other scholars have sort of taken this up. So, for example, Donald Ritchie has talked about how, you know, his works really, really kind of represent Zen in a certain way, you know, or some sort of uh, awareness of, you know, like uh, things like a mano no aware. And so then I would talk about that a little more and say, like, you know, this is the evidence that he provides for using this particular framework. And then I would say, but then other scholars 
including Ozu himself, actually disagrees with this assessment. And he and then I would say like, oh, the reasons that they disagree is because you know that you know uh, they think that Donald Ritchie is doing some form of Orientalism, where he's actually you know saying that this thing is Asian, when actually you know Ozu you know may say that the the filmmakers that he's most similar to are early you know cinema early cinema silent cinema directors who do use long shots for you know technological reasons, for example. You know, or for, and then I could talk about like David Boardwell or these other filmmakers. But then I could say that, well, then if you, and then after that, then I would shift the conversation again and be like, okay, so even if you think that the reasons why Ozu's style is particularly uh, made, not because it's Asian and because it reflects some sort of Asian Japanese Zen identity, but because of technological reasons for cinematic reasons, right? Like for storytelling. But then I could, you know, then I would bring up another scholar's counterpoint would be like, if you say that, then you're saying that there's nothing cultural or nothing culturally specific to the work that Ozu has done and that it doesn't have any influence. And that would also be an oversimplification of the issue. Right. So then I would say, OK, well, certain scholars say that you can look at issues of Japanese modernity and how that influences, you know, Jap uh, cinematic reception of Ozu's work and so on and so forth. So then I'm conducting a discussion through the literature review threads and I'm threading it with a sort of argument about this overall question like you know is there such thing as Asianness when it comes to Ozu cinema okay and then eventually I will get to my sort of point I'll be like okay so people have said this and people disagreed with that and then people disagreed with that and people disagree with that and ultimately I think that the best way to answer this question is the way that I want to answer it is by comparing his work to other Asian directors who maybe be a closer fit stylistically, but then maybe are part of a different country or have experienced a different type of modernity or something like that, you know, or use a different kind of topic in order to really kind of get at this question. But I'm only able to do that through the literature review and also in order to identify to my readers and explain to my readers why it is that I want to go in that direction. So you need to be able to do the same thing with your dissertation research. You need to be able to identify the kind of ongoing arguments that have that are taking place in the field and you know the kind of trajectory and then you you then you know as you after you go through this kind of long not too long but at least detailed and explicit argue argu, uh, sorry discussion thread you know like let's say it's like you know then you would make your own mark um i don't know one very easy kind of visual way to rethink this would be like a message board or like a forum or like a twitter thread you you would demonstrate you would see okay this poster said this this person responded this person responded this person responded if you want to respond you need to read everything that everyone else has said first in order to advance the conversation okay otherwise your your addition to this forum thread or this twitter remark will not help the conversation in any way so your literature review needs to do that following a certain discussion thread and then you would add on to it at the end Okay. So another thing uh, that's important is literature reviews are ongoing. So the final literature review that you do is going to go through a lot of revisions. You start off with literature review, you identify the research you're going to do, then you then you realize, oh, hey, you know, maybe I need to go back and research again. So do it before you begin research writing, do it after completing research writing, do it during research and writing. You will constantly refer back to literature review. Okay, the literature review, and I, I really like this 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 uh, analogy is it's the soil from which your plants grow. You will always be underpinning your points and arguments with reference to key theorists and the experts in the field. Now, this doesn't mean that you're copying them. If anything, it might mean that you're breaking off from them. Okay, that you're saying, okay, other people did this, and that gives me a stable platform from which to perform my own research and say how I defer, you know, from their work. Okay, so all arguments take the form of building on or critiquing some form of previously established knowledge. That doesn't mean that you're, and a critique actually makes what other people say stronger. I know that sounds strange, but you're not undermining them. You're building on their work, okay? All right, so where do you find literature, okay? You know, uh, hopefully you've gotten pretty good at this by now, but you check the footnotes and reference sections of key books, articles, and other research papers. Read other literature reviews, but understand that you will use the literature in different ways with different angles of attack, okay? So, like, let's say I read a literature re review of Ozu, right, and it's entirely about, you know, like, um, the pillow shot. 
you know, I can use that and I can read the original research, right? You know, and like, let's say this, this literature review of the pillow shot, you know, talks about these, you know, rights includes the academic work of these five different scholars. Now, these five different scholars didn't only talk about the pillow shot. So I might go back to the work and be like, okay, well, what does this scholar say about the, um, the vase shot, for example, or the, the use of um, parallelism? Okay, all of these scholars will have many of things to have said. So you can trace back and look at what else that scholar has said. Okay, another thing you can do is you can join reading groups, read journals, obviously Google Scholar searches. Okay, you just need to keep reading. The more reading you do, the more you'll find. The more you find, then the more you'll find. And it just keeps building like that. Okay, all right. So keep adjusting as needed, be flexible. So you design a search strategy plan, you implement the strategy, you record the results, then you redesign the strategy, and then you reflect and you start again. And you just keep going, okay? This is this is the process of research. And to be honest with you, when you submit your dissertation, it's not going to be the final, okay? It's still just going to be one step in a longer research journey of your kind of overall research trajectory, okay? So just keep open-minded, right? Growth mindset, okay? Your research is always growing, okay? All right, so... Uh, let's say you are at a workshop, okay? Uh, so you would select a journal article that relates to your research topic, and then you do what's called SQ3R. SQ3R stands for the three, the, the four things you're going to do. So you write down the key points, the full citation details, the author, subject, etc. You know, on some sort of easy file to understand filing system. Like I said last week, right? You can use an index card, you can use Trello, you can use Evernote, whatever. EndNote also does this. Okay, I just don't know how to use it. Decide where and under what headings you want to file it in. You tag it with keywords, and then consider how these headings fit into your literature review chapter. Okay. So the SQ3R method for note taking. First, you survey. You quick read through that article or whatever. You identify the main points and establish if it's worth reading closely. Okay, so for my example, then I'm going to do some work. All right, so like I'm teaching a class on gender and colonialism. Okay, so decolonizing gender. So so this is one that I'm kind of preparing for my lecture. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to survey first heterosexualism and the colonial modern gender system. Okay, so modern. Okay, and heterosexualism. So it's focusing on two things specifically: heterosexuality, colonialism, and gender as a system. I already know that. Okay. So then I would look at what colonial power is understood by this person. Characters of global Eurocentric capitalist power that's organized around two axes. Okay, coloniality of power and modernity. Okay, so I know that this is kind of like a world systems kind of approach too. Okay, introduces the basic and universal social classification of the population of the planet in terms of the ideas of race. Okay, so this is this is a very Foucauldian way of looking at it. Universal social classification of the population. Just think about coloniality as a form of biopower. Okay, so so then I'm gonna like okay, so this is a way of thinking about biopower, populations, race. Okay, so I would start surveying these things. So in this essay, Lugonis introduces a systematic understanding of gender constituted by coloniality, colonial modernity in terms of multiple relations of power. Okay, so it's talking about the construction of gender. Okay, has a light and dark side that depict relations and beings in relations as deeply different and thus calling for very different patterns of violent abuse. Lagonis argues that gender itself is a colonial introduction, a violent introduction consistently and contemporarily used to destroy people's cosmologies and communities as a building ground of the civilized West. So it's a critique of Western imperialism. Okay, so already from the abstract alone, I understand the main points. And yes, it's definitely worth reading closely, okay, especially for my course, you know, because it's going to provide evidence and also substantive critique, okay, of these things. Okay, so I've already done the survey. What's next? Question, what was that about? Okay, all right, so what's it about? Um, it's about how a colonial system creates the gender norms that we understand, okay, and how that is part of the colonialist imperialism. Okay, got it. Right. Then I read. So I would look through it all and I'd read it carefully and I would read and read. So what I do usually is I will read and I'll, I'll highlight and I'll kind of copy down sections that I think are important. So let's say, for example, right, that I am, okay, I'm doing my note taking for this. Okay, so for me, I use Trello, right? Okay, uh, decolonizing gender. Okay, I would create a new card and it would be academic reading, Lugonis. Uh, what is it? Uh, I should have done this in the first one. Heterosexualism, the colonial modern gender system. Okay. 
uh, heterosexualism and the modern colonial gender system. Okay. Then I would put down the citation. So lib HKU. Okay. Lugonis, heterosexualism, colonialism. Oh, heterosexism. Right, I wrote the wrong thing. Sexism. It's a colonial power. Modern. Sorry, I'm just doing this to. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, heterosexualism in the colonial modern gender system. Okay. Then I would want the citation. So you could also do this yourself, which is probably better, right? But this was in Hypatia. Hypatia? I don't know, it's Greek. Okay, where am I? Okay, so there's a citation. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so then I would start, you know, like what are my keywords, right? Where are the keywords, right? It's like colonial. Okay, or the, what's the question? How does um, the colonial system of social classification generate gender norms used to justify your European imperialism. Okay, all right, so got that. That's And that's a big part of it, right? So does this have to do with my research? Well, yes, for this course, okay? So then I would say, okay, so now I'm gonna find the particular quotations that really matter to me, okay? So in a post pre-colonial European gender arrangement implies it imposed a new gender system A new genesis that created a very different range of colonial than for white bourgeois colonists. Thus, it introduced many genders. Okay, so this is really important, right? So, so then I would put that, right? And then I would put the page number, page number uh, one eight six. Okay, and then I'd write something. I'd be like, okay, Lugonis demonst argues that the gender system implemented in the colonies is not what Europeans followed pre-colonially before they call it in Europe okay, let's just say. instead it's a new system of gender that was used to enforce the colonial power and actually the colonizers themselves didn't even use this gender system. Okay, so that's a really important point, all right? So I say that, okay? All right, so that might be a whole paragraph in my literature review, okay? All right, but then if you think about it too, it's like when I write my literature review, this is actually gonna be, I would just copy paste this part, right? And then I would kind of write up that paragraph. So you're already doing a lot of the work, okay? So, but then, you know, we cannot understand this gender system without understanding what Quijano calls the coloniality of power. The reason to historicize gender system is that without history. So then I would say something like, okay, you know, methodology, understand history of coloniality of power and its institutions. Okay. So I would say like, you know, this is the importance. This is the methodology that Lugonis uses taken from Quijano because blah, 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 okay, so on and so forth, okay, all right, so then I would just keep going and keep doing that, okay, not everything is going to make it into my essay, okay, but I'm reading it very carefully, okay, and I'm taking good notes, all right, you know, and record, okay, so this is what I was just doing there, right, you note the main ideas and the arguments, note citations you need to follow up, structure your notes and process the arguments, make sub notes and discussion points commenting. So create those main headings too, okay? So sometimes what I'll do, you know, right? If it's if it's actually something that's really long, you know, or really useful, I might give it its own list, you know, so I'll be like Lugonis reading, right? And then I might be like, okay, so this is the section on methodology. So then I would start, you know, putting all the stuff about the methodology. And then this would be like the, the data, you know, it would be like, you know, the, you know, examples of the, you know, indigenous people and their gender system, you know, and then I would, you know, put the, you know, page 168 talks about, and then blah, 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 so on and so forth. Okay. And then I would just keep denying, 
you know, keep filling in these cards, you know, like conclude, blah, 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 okay? Main points, okay? So you could do it that way as well. And that's, you know, that's that's also pretty um, pretty useful way to do it, okay? Then you would review. So this SQ3R is three R's, okay? So, so first it's survey, S, Q, question, and then there's three R's. The three R's are read, record, okay? And I, I recommend that you read and record at the same time. And then review. Then you would look at it very again quickly. Did you get the main argument and the most important points? Get everything you need for your work. Any references, quotations recorded correctly? What did you miss? Okay. Now this is key because you don't want to have to be writing your literature review or even like, you know, like you don't want to be like on July 30, you know, July 30th and be like, oh shoot, you know, I missed something and then need to go back. You just want to be able to go back to your notes and just copy paste or whatever and look at it again. You don't want to have to go back to the article and reread the whole thing. I can tell you like, I spent so much of my life like rereading articles over and over again because I forgot. Okay, so just take good notes. Okay, SQ3R: survey, question, read, record, review. Okay, get everything down. Okay, and then you know when it comes to actually write your literature review, you'll have done all of the work that it's really easy to just kind of paste it in. Okay, like you know obviously you need to ex you need to resummarize, you need to explain how it deals with the larger conversation. But if you take really good notes. You're kind of already starting the writing process. Okay. All right. Lastly, writing up. Narrow your topic. Okay. Yeah. So literature review will help you narrow your topic. So some of you still might be at a quite general place. You know, it's like, is Canto Pop important to Hong Kong identity? Okay. You need to get even more detail. You know, like, are is ludo is ludology important for understanding visual narratives? Okay. Yeah. That's 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 still quite general. What aspect of ludology? You know, what is it about choice in games? You know, that has to do with visual narrative. How? And then you're just gonna your question is gonna get more and more specific, more and more specific. You know, when it comes to Canto pop, you know, it's like, is it important that it's Canto or is it important that it's pop? You know, is it important that it's the lyrics? Is that what people are saying? You know, and is the lyric a way to understand its cultural value, or is it also in the way that Canto pop would would be the first to borrow? American pop or Western European pop and it's kind of standards such as you know new new types of rhythms you new types of R&B sound rhythm and blues you know uh, new types of you know um, Group formations and that kind of thing. Okay, and is that what made Canto pop popular? So these are the kind of you need to you need to know what everyone else has said before you're gonna have a real accurate idea of what your research needs to do Okay Find a focus. Okay, this is key. So you want your focus you know, to be very, very clear, organize around your ideas, what themes or issues connect your sources together, do they present one or different solutions, how well do they present the material, and do they portray it according to an appropriate theory, do they reveal a trend in the field, a debate, pick one of these themes to focus and organize the review. So sometimes you're going to read a few red herrings, you're going to read kind of, you know, scholar scholarship articles that are not useful, not well written, you know, they talk about kind of what you're trying to say, but they are not really saying anything worthwhile, or interesting. Just because you took notes on it and read it doesn't mean it goes in your literature review. Okay? If it doesn't fit, just cut it. If it doesn't add to the if it doesn't add to your conversation, leave it out. Okay. So it's important to remember that every time you cite someone, even if you're critical, even if you're critical, you're still kind of like honoring them in a way. You know, if you critique something that someone has said, you're kind of doing them justice. You're saying like, okay, what you said is worth talking about, even though I disagree with it. Okay, or even though I think that it misses a few things. That's important. You need to, you know, whereas the people who don't get cited at all, that's the stuff or the scholarship that does not get cited is the stuff that's not worth mentioning. Okay, so don't, if it doesn't add to your kind of conversation, don't include it. Okay. All right. So that's the literature review. So your literature review then is going to be pretty long. All right. Uh, it's going to be the, it's going to be the, the kind of dom. It's going to take up quite a bit of your first, your first chapter, whether that's an introduction or a chapter kind of up to you, but it's really, really key. So for me, you know, as, as a grader, I'm always going to be looking at the literature review and making sure that the literature review kind of demonstrates the importance and value of the research. Okay, and also how well it educates me and brings me up to date on what's going on in the field. Okay, so the, the literature review really is like the homework section. Okay, that then justifies the methodology, the choice of subject, your corpus, and also your methodological approach to that corpus, and explains why it is that that corpus, sorry, that methodology and approach to the corpus and choice of corpus is useful for answering the overall research question. 
Okay. All right. So yeah, that's the importance of a literature review. So that's it for now. Um, what I will do is then I'm going to give you some feedback on your your individual uh, writing work, the worksheets that you did already, and then be prepared to um, do your annotated bibliography and uh, an example, you know, of you know and part of your literature review. Remember, I want your literature review to overall for the dissertation to be much longer. So the more you write now, the better off you'll be. So I recommend you write more for that. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. Please write. Write and include any research question. Sorry, any questions you have and feedback about this lecture in the forum, so that I can then answer it there, so all of your classmates can read it as well. Okay, that's it, and I will talk to you later. Bye.